What's going on everyone? D-Legend here today. We are going to be going over some of the items that we picked up from Japan recently and uh, a lot of these are actually English products as you've probably seen in the thumbnail. I uh, don't want to spoil too too much if you haven't seen the thumbnail. Actually you've probably all seen the thumbnail. So we've got a lot of different um, Yu-Gi-Oh tins and a lot of these are from 5Ds and from GX. So let's get right into it guys. Um, subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content where I show you guys some of the pickups that I get for myself and for middleman clients slash friends. Um, so all these tins are going to be for my friend Amit in Germany. And uh, yeah, he uses me as a middleman for a lot of purchases from Japan. And I am happy that he does because that means he trusts me. And um, I love just checking out what he picks up. This is a Duelist pack collection tin. This is the first iteration of this specific tin. Um, so this is like a small tin. It's not it's not a regular sized Yu-Gi-Oh tin like that you see um, from back in the day with the collector's tins. These are the smaller version. This one comes with three Duelist Pack Yusei and then one Duelist Genesis Pack, which is awesome. Uh, you also get a preview pack of three foil cards from Radiant Battle. So I'm pretty sure you're going to get Shred of the Blue Flame, I want to say, as one of the promos from this tin. Um, and I don't remember the other two, but I do remember grading a couple of these for... I want to say Crash Town Collecting a few years ago, um, the, the promos from this tin. Um, and I think you got 10s on them, so I think they're all in pretty good shape. Uh, you also get, I think, Starlight Road as the uh, promo card, but I could be wrong. It could be something else. I don't remember the promo off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool tin, um, very iconic, featuring, of course, Stardust Dragon in the back there, Junk Warrior and Nitro Warrior. So. Cool tin to start off with. Unfortunately, a little tiny tear there, but what can you do about those little tiny things? It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. This is a, one of the first tins that we're gonna be showcasing. Um, this is the other tin that he picked up. He actually picked up two of these, and these are really cool. I actually um, bought a case of these back in the day, but a European case, so I think there were slight differences in some of the promos potentially, or just some of the corners and whatever else um, for some of the cards just because of European card stock, but this is the North American version and uh, cards made in the USA, yeah. Uh, so these feature three Duelist Pack USA 2. So this is the second um, series of this tin specifically. An Ancient Prophecy Booster Pack as well. And then Starlight Road and a three card promo pack. I can't remember what the promos are, honestly. Um, but the Ancient Prophecy Pack is unlimited. Same with the for, uh, Duelist Genesis Pack here for the first tin. Um, you are getting an unlimited Duelist Genesis Pack. From my understanding, I've never really, but you never know with 5Ds, like you never really know what you could get. This one could be a first ed uh, Ancient Prophecy pack, who the heck knows? Um, like I said, with 5D stints, these, this one's just the same thing, so we're gonna leave it at that. And then the last mini tin that was picked up was this Duelist Pack Collection tin. Um, you get yourself card ejector. Um, I actually had one of these tins as a kid back in the day because I have this promo from back in the day. I just don't have the tin itself, unfortunately, which is too bad because it would have been really cool to ha have for my collection, even if it was opened. Um, you are getting five packs and one bonus card here. You are getting all Duelist packs from this, though. Um, there's no core sets in this specific tin. So you're getting two Duelist pack Jaden 3s, two Duelist pack Jessies, and two and a Duelist pack Zane Truesdale. Um, except I believe the Duelist pack Zane... Actually, I can't remember. Is the Duelist Pack Zane in this one the only first edition pack? I could, I don't know. I can't remember. Versa Collectibles, let me know, because I know you have opened up a bunch of those Duelist Pack Zanes um, in hopes of pulling that Cyber Dragon. It's just a rare, but it's impossible to pull, apparently. And you're also getting an Ultra Rare card, or yeah, the at Ultra Rare card. This is the promo. So yeah, pretty cool tin. We've blabbered on enough about those. Let's get into some of these other tins that we have here. So... This is a beauty. This is Raviel, Lord of Phantasms. I would love to open this up, but I don't think Ahmet's gonna let me do that, unfortunately. Um, there are six tins in this entire like series of tins, essentially. So there are all three of the um, Sacred Beasts, but I believe this one came out before Uriah and for and before Haman. Um, you're getting yourself five GX booster packs, and I can't remember which ones they are, but you're getting... Okay, so this is the, yeah, this is the first launch tin. Um, the other ones would be uh, Neos and Cyber Dragon. And you are getting yourself in this tin, um, two Cybernetic Revolution, one Elemental Energy, and one Shadow of Infinity, um, as well as one Enemy of Justice. So pretty solid selection of packs there, I would say. Um, all unlimited, unfortunately. And this, I believe, is a North American tin. Um, hard to tell, really, because it does say Las Vegas there. 
Um, but then it also does say the Netherlands. So I'm not sure for this one specifically. But it, it, does, say, it does say email us at ude at upperdeck.com. So maybe that's Upper Deck Europe. So this one might be a European tin. I, I don't know. We'll have to kind of compare. We actually, thankfully, have another beautiful tin to kind of compare it to. This was actually not bought off um, the Japanese site that we use. This was purchased on eBay, and then Ahmet shipped it to me. This one does say UDE as well, so I don't know. This one was purchased in the States, so I'm pretty sure it's just a North American tin. But this one features... Um, this is the second launch tin, so it features one cybernetic revolution, one elemental energy, one shadow of infinity, one enemy of justice, and one power of the duelist. So you're getting five different unique packs in this, and then of course that beautiful shining flare wingman promo. Beautiful card. And of course the Ravael here is awesome as well. Just doesn't shine quite as much because there's a lot more um, just art to this card. Oh wow, this thing is shifting around. Kind of crazy. Um, we'll be gentle with those. And yeah, that's basically the last of the tins, but we have one last banger. And this one, you guys probably know, Red Dragon Archfiend. This is the one of the only ways to get first edition Duelist Genesis packs. And of course that promo is beautiful. Um, in PSA 10, the promo for Red Dragon Archfiend goes for like 200 US dollars, maybe 175-ish at this point in time. Um, but the promo itself almost paid for this tin, which is how good a deal this tin was. Um, in PSA 10, if it grades a 10. But you are getting two Duelist Genesis first edition packs, two Unlimited Phantom Darkness, and one Light of Destruction Unlimited pack, um, plus the promo, of course, and uh, a promo pack of tokens, I believe. So really cool tin. I wish I picked this up for myself. I would have loved to rip it just for to see what's in those Duelist Genesis packs. Um, obviously, your your chances of pulling a Stardust and Ghost or Ulti or even Ultra are super, super slim. Um, but honestly, it would be such a fun rip, and I wish that Amit would, uh, let me open it. Just hit, tell him in the comments, guys, tell him to let me open this, and maybe if I am able to, um, convince him, or if you guys are able to convince him before I ship this off, he'll let me open it. I think he wants to keep it sealed, honestly, but it'd be really cool to open up on the channel, because I've never opened up one of these tins. I've opened up a Stardust Dragon tin as a kid, but never one of these. And then quite a few ancient, like of the Ancient Fairy Dragon and Power Tool Dragon tins and Jack Atlas tins, but only for First Ed Ancient Prophecy, not First Ed Star, uh, Duelist Genesis. So that's kind of it for the tins and sealed product. We have one other item here that I do not want to unwrap because it's just too much work to pack it back up. Um, but these are the, like these are really light because they're just empty giant deck or storage boxes essentially. Um, I don't even know how to show you without, I'll try to remember to put this, like edit this into the video sometime um, to show you an image of what they look like, but it's a Joey, um, I can't remember the card's name, Guilford, it's like that demon looking thing, and then I think there's one that's like a red eyes um, themed one, so really cool products, um, just not no nothing card related specifically, so I'm going to leave this sealed and just ship it as is because I don't want to touch it. It's just too much effort to repack it. And then we'll move on to just some singles that I have picked up recently, but also um, that Amit has picked up. So let me get into this little bag that I kind of threw everything into um, just to make my life easier instead of opening up the packages on camera because that would take up way too much of your guys' time. And I'm trying to be better about um, just not, not dealing with that on camera. So yeah, first and foremost, let's go through Amit's cards and then we'll go through mine at the end of this video. So, some bangers though, guys, for real. Okay, so first and foremost, this is a Desvolgraph. I can't remember its name either, but beautiful secret prismatic secret rare foiling. And it's a sealed promo from a video game, I believe. So... Yeah, awesome card. I know this was a prize card at one point in time, too. Um, maybe, no, I don't think this is a prize card, but very, very, very nice card. I like this a lot. So that's for Amit. And another card for Amit is this beautiful, it doesn't look like anything special right now, but let me just pull it out for you guys to showcase it on camera a little bit better. This is a SDK looking blue eyes white dragon. This is a prismatic ultimate rare version of this, though. 
and you can kind of just tell that the texturing is insane. This lighting does not do it justice. Let me try to give you guys a bit of a better um, view of this card. There's just some beautiful, beautiful texturing to this, and it looks a little cheap with just the way it's lit up right there, but the texturing on like the prismatic ulti part of it is just gorgeous to me like the borders of the card and everything like that it just looks amazing and it does not look like a vanilla monster at all because of the way it's and the stars look at the stars just absolutely insane in my opinion um i think it looks better in pictures honestly than than in this video but and in real life it definitely looks really nice in real life too um not my favorite printing of this card by any means um, blue eyes has a million different printings but it's a very nice card nonetheless and uh yeah congrats to you for picking this up on it because it's it's actually a pretty pricey single um from from this set and i think we're probably gonna get this in quarter century bonanza actually i don't know maybe not because they've already released sdk art blue eyes in the megatons from this year so the tin of dueling mirrors so i'm not sure if uh they're gonna release this prismatic ultimate rare ever to be honest with you so we'll see but uh, yeah, let's move on to my cards that I picked up. So let's go through the really quick random um, core century rare pickups that I've gotten recently first. Um, not really random, they're things from my collection, of course, but so these I just picked up recently, Honest, Seal of Orichalcos. This one has a weird like print land thing kind of going through like right there. I know it's hard to tell with just how sparkly the card is, but like it just looks really strange right there. Is that normal? Somebody let me know. It just kind of goes through the entire card from top to bottom, so. Very strange. Uh, Wing Kribo again. I have one of these already. And then a U-Bell. Uh, nothing spectacular. Mostly for just my binder, um, in all honesty. I picked up a few copies of this Blackwing Dragon just because it's number one cheap right now. It's like a dollar or less. Um, and uh, I needed at least one gradable copy for my PSA 10 Signer Dragon collection in Quarter Century Rare. I do have the Starlight Rare version of this card. Um, from Darkwing Blast in PSA 9, but I figured I would try to grade all of these signers because um, we know Lifestream or Power Tool or both are going to come out in the Quarter Century Bonanza set. So, um, I mean, we don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do some fan service and complete the set for us. Um, we don't know yet, but that's coming out. That set's coming out in like a week, like 10 days from now. So, no, no, a bit more than that. Today's the 24th, I want to say. So, I think, yeah, like 12 days from now maybe a bit more than that like two weeks from now but anyways yeah blackwing dragon beautiful card i like it um picked up a red dragon arch fiend as well i picked up a few of these because none of them were in great shape until i found this one so let's just take a quick peek at it but yeah beautiful card should get a psa 10 on this copy i've taken a look at it already very nice um and then i love this card but unfortunately this card looks like there's like a weird bend or something on the back like this thing looks gorgeous in quarter century rare i'm a big fan very big fan i love the asian english version of this but i would not pay 90 dollars for it compared to three dollars for this one so it looks like there's like a little bend there unfortunately and i think psa would notice that and i don't necessarily want that graded as a psa 10 anyways um so unfortunately i'm gonna have to hunt for another one of these i think i picked up two more of these um raw copies so that should be here soon but yeah, nice binder copy. Why not just stick it in there and keep it for the personal collection? Uh, next up, we're going to go into some of the pickups for myself from Japan. These came in the same package as the stuff that Amit got. So first and foremost, an Elemental Hero Mudball Man Legendary Collection GX. I know that this isn't technically the first print of this card, but I needed one of these because it's the only hollow version of this and i know the mcdonald's promo pack um technically came out before this i want to say but yeah this card is extremely clean for being in a random lot um uh, considered bulk it's just slightly off centered top to bottom so that might just prevent it from getting a psa 10 but i'm probably going to grade this anyways because i have not found a cleaner copy and i needed one of these for my personal collection so gonna be keeping that for sure and then I also, like, in the same lot, um, there were some other super rares, so Terra Firma and Heraklinos. Um, so this one's probably just going to go off to, to to my bulk buyer, but this one I might just keep as well for my binder. Um, 
nice looking copy of this card. Of course, the Premium Pack 2 version is the one I would want in my personal collection if I were to grade one of these. I'm not, I'm undecided about the, the manga um, hero seats so far, for the most part, except for like Ocean and a few of the others. But that's that for those. Um, next up, a pickup, really random, this uh, Korean card from Duelist Revolution and this other random Duelist Revolution card. Yeah, I just picked these up for my personal, I'm just kidding. There's a card in the myth, in the middle of these and it is a pretty cool card. So Mermail Abyssius, of course, Mermails are getting a lot of play these days with Rage of the Abyss coming out to revamp Mermails. And uh, I picked this up for really cheap. It was like 20 bucks or no, a bit more than that. But anyways, um, picked it up to flip, literally to flip. Very clean card other than this right there, I would say for the most part. So it's probably a, I don't know, mod, is that mod play guys? You guys let me know. Probably light play mod play. Um, it's like a it's like a pencil marker, like a fingernail mark, kind of going through the card. Unfortunately, but the rest of the card again looks pretty darn solid. So I think I will just sell this and um, make some money back because again this was like twenty dollars. But I think a mod play copy or a heavy played copy of this card is like 40, 40 bucks right now. So I figured why not just pick it up and make a quick buck to cover some of these other costs. Um, yeah, next up. Oh, I also forgot this one. This is a quarter century rare Dark Magician Girl. I know nothing spectacular, but figured I'd show it off on camera as well. This one's from my boy um, Brian. So shout out to you, my my guy, um, for sending me your, basically your cleanest copy, I think. So I really appreciate you, my friend. This is going to be another Gem Mint 10 to add to my personal collection, but also to your count for um, Gem Mint 10s in general because you haven't missed the mark yet. You've picked out beautiful cards to submit for yourself and then for, for me, so I'm really thankful for that, and I appreciate you. Next up, I don't normally collect cards like this, but I had to pick this up. This is a first edition Generation Force number 17 Leviathan Dragon, so the cover of card of Generation Force, um, but it's Korean first edition, so honestly, I, I just had to pick it up because I know that, like, I know older Korean first eds um, from, like, GX and such are extremely rare. Um, I'm not sure that the, this one is necessarily super rare, but I just had to pick it up because of the way the foiling looks on this card. It's pretty crazy if you uh, compare it to the North American print version or even the Euro print version of this card. Like the scales on this card as texturing look absolutely insane. And then even the borders just look so, like, so much more vivid than than you would notice on um, a Euro print copy or a North American print copy. I have a PSA 10 in North American print, Ultimate Rare, and this just, this takes the cake for sure. And the fact that it's first ed Korean, had to pick it up, had to pick it up. It's pretty clean too, for the most part. Like there's a huge ulti stamp going through the entire card, like literally every border of it. And PSA is probably gonna think that this card is damaged but I'm gonna try to leave a note for the grader and hopefully they recognize it as not actually damaged because you can't, like, it's just part of the card. That's just the way it was printed, if that makes any sense. Like, it's just the way it was factory printed, but beautiful card, I really like this. And uh, if it grades like a PSA 9, I'd be okay with that. Very, very nice card, happy with it. Um, moving on, we have two last cards and then we'll end the video. Thank you guys for sticking around this long. Um, if you just got here or if you skipped ahead to this part, you're gonna, gonna be happy with this last little bit here. So we have an Ernios. This is a Korean Prince Ultimate Rare, but Ernios in general is just sought after these days because it's never going to be reprinted by Konami. Um, in any set. Like I know the quarter century Bonanza people have been voting for this card specifically to get printed, but you know that's just not gonna happen. And uh, Ruxin made a very funny little YouTube or uh, Instagram story clip the other day, and he was like, yeah, like, if if everybody votes for this, then we'll just, we'll force Konami to, to print it, but it's just, it's just not gonna happen, guys. Um, this card is gorgeous, though. I really like it, and it's extremely clean, too. So, other than the ulti stamp, which, again, is a factory process, so I'm gonna just tell PSA that. This is going to PSA for sure, and it should get a PSA 10. That is gorgeous, and it's probably just going to sit in my personal collection, um, in all honesty, because 
cover card of GX set. It was like 30, 30 bucks maybe, if I'm re recalling correctly. So for 30 bucks for a um, GX Ultimate Rare, why the heck not? Uh, I know it's Korean and I know a lot, not a lot of people love Korean print, but this is a beautiful card and I'm happy to add it to my personal collection. And lastly, we have another Arneos, but this one is a Japanese OCG print. So the foiling does look slightly different if you guys can't really... Actually, for this specific card, it looks pretty similar compared to other cards, I would say. Yeah, it's actually really uncannily similar. The stars look a bit different, though, for sure. You can kind of tell. Um, but the actual foiling is pretty similar, I would say. Maybe it's a bit more defined for the Korean version, but yeah, I don't know. Looks very similar to compared to like Flaming Man and compared to um, Shining Flaming Man. They look very, very, very different. If you haven't seen my video on that, you should check it out. Um, I'll leave a little annotation or something. But yeah, this is a Japanese print Arneos. And uh, again, I, I did have a PSA. I picked up a raw copy back in like a few, like probably last year at some point or earlier this year. Graded a PSA 10. And ended up selling it because I got a pretty solid offer for it. Um, but then I finally found another copy of this that's very clean and gradable. And just a card that I'll probably keep in my personal collection at this point. Um, unless I get another really good offer for it and then I'll try to hunt for another one. But it's ever so slightly off-centered left to right, but it's definitely within the 60-40 range. So it should get a PSA 10 in my opinion. But we'll see what the grader says. Um, in a few months, but I will keep you guys posted and we'll kind of go from there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching that video, uh, this entire video. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy this kind of content. If you do, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate y'all. Um, and uh, yeah, have a great day. I will see you all next time. Peace.